Okay, we resume now with a Swisspro tutorial. This tutorial is going to be given by Anne Strescher. She works in the Swisspro group at the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics, and she's co-responsible for the communication program that we have in the Swisspro group, and she's also an annotator in the HPI Human Proteome Initiative program in Swisspro. As uh, geolinks, I thought you were Cracovia because she, I mean, her family originate from Cracovia and also Geneva. And Biolinks, I mean, I could not list all the people because basically she has contact with all of the members of Swissprot and uh, also of the FIG group at SIB and many members of the EBI. There is another slide, Anulka. <laughs> I mean, basically it's a slide which is quite important. It's a phylogenetic tree to show that it requires many generations of breeding to produce the Swiss pot annotators. <laughs> if you see Anulka descend directly from a physician, a painter, a rector, a botanist, a librarian, a chemist, and a musicologist. So you need six generations of breeding to produce the perfect Swiss pot annotators. So Anulka, <laughs> start your presentation. <laughs> Your brother, yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will maybe not thank the organizers, but uh, I would like to thank all the participants that are here to enjoy this 20th uh, anniversary of Swissprot. And during the next half hour or so, I will present you the questions that are the most frequently asked to Swissprot. And um, uh -oh. Um, the, the questions I will show you are real questions, so even the types, typos were not corrected. Uh, the question arrives with two, mostly two pipelines to Swissprot. These are the two uh, addresses. One is at the XPASI server, and the other one comes from the uh, help desk uh, at Uniprot. Uh, keep in mind these addresses, and don't hesitate if you have questions to use them. But as we are all now in Fortaleza, don't hesitate also to find SwissPort annotators or programmers and speak and exchange questions and ideas. The first type of question that is quite frequent are problems in finding a protein. So one was here from a user who was looking for immunoglobulin from Lamapacas. Although the first problem which looks trivial is a problem of typo. He was looking for Lama Pacas, while Lama is Lama Pacos. It looks trivial, but uh, we have sometimes problems like this, that people make typo, and this is the reason why they don't find the uh, protein. In this case, um, the Lama Pacos is uh, definitely underrepresented. Uh, in uh, Uniprot, KB, Swissprot, and Tremble, there are only 40 entries. And even if you go upstream to nucleic acid database, such as EMBL, you find only about 100 entries. What should be uh, mentioned is that we don't annotate immunoglobulin in Swissprot, and currently most of the immunoglobulins are stored um, only in Unipark. In addition, Lamapacos is not an annotation priority. As uh, in Swissprot, we, um, uh, we manually annotated entries, it's time consuming, so that we need to have annotation priorities well defined to have a set of representative proteins in uh, model organisms. So we have a list here of uh, priorities. Most of them are oriented towards model organisms. So we annotate microbial proteins, mammalian, plant, fungi, uh, viruses, Drosophila, C. elegans, xenopus, and also toxins. We also have annotation priority uh, in issues that are really shared by all these organisms, which are post-translational modifications or 3D structures or protein interactions. Unfortunately, Lama Pacos doesn't fit in those. Another problem to find protein was here raised by um, 
a user who couldn't find human apolipoprotein B100. And indeed, if you make a quick search on Expasy, for instance, with human apolipoprotein B100, you don't find any entry. But hopefully, you can immediately send a message to the SwissPod team to find out what the problem is. If you look just for apolipoprotein B100, you find five tremble entries, but none of them are human. Now, if you add a dash, you can finally retrieve human apolipoprotein B100 from SwissProt. So this is a problem of our search engines, uh, but currently we are working on our Uniprot unified website, and there will be new search engine that will be able to cope with dashes or, for instance, Roman versus Arabic figures and so on. Uh, it should be also uh, mentioned now that during the annotation process, we try not only to give the main name of a protein or of a gene, but also a whole list of synonyms. And very often we include the presence of absence of a dash in the synonyms. So the problem of synonym was raised by another user who was looking for beta-2 adrenal receptor. And indeed, the, uh, the synonym was missing from the entry, and it has been added. Okay, many users would like to find SwissProt or UniProt KB entries with NCBI uh, identifiers. The problem here with GI, this is quite frequent that people ask for GI, but GI are a specifically gene bank identifier, and as you see, it's not stable, so that we cannot include GIs in our entries. But of note, uh, we will add other cross-references to the NCBI, uh, notably the next change will be to add cross-references to RefSeq from Uniprot KB. But although we don't have GI in our entries, we still have a magic tool on Uniprot which allows mapping from various identifiers towards Uniprot KB entry. So here you see with this tool we could Look for GI. I introduce the number um, required by the um, requested by the user, and and tremble entry was from uh, rice was retrieved. So once the user find a protein, there are many other questions. First of all, do all SwissProt proteins have CDS nucleotide sequences? Most of them do, more than ninety six percent. Because the most usual uh, way to enter SwissProt is through tremble coming from EMBL. So I will very briefly tell you uh, what is this process. But if you have any question, please ask Claire O'Donovan or Maria Marti for details. They know everything about tremble. But basically, if uh, some authors submit a nucleic acid sequence and propose a CDS, the CDS is translated and the amino acid sequence will be integrated into a new tremble entry. The reference submitted will also, will also be uh, transferred as well as the description of the protein product. But currently in SwissProt we have above 8,000 entries that do not have cross-references to the EMBL because they don't have CDS submitted. One of these entries shown here, please try to focus on the reference section here. In the reference section of the SwissProt entry, we add all the references that were used to annotate the entry. And what we do is that not only we cite the, the reference, like here, for instance, with the authors, the title, and the journal, but we also add an additional title here which will indicate you what type of information we retrieved from this paper or submission. And in this case, you see that it was a protein sequence. In the cross-reference section, you indeed don't see any cross-reference to the MBL, but as the protein has been sequenced at the protein level, you will have a keyword, uh, which is direct protein sequencing. Most of these sequences were directly submitted uh, to SwissProt via a new a tool uh, on the, at the EBI, which is called SPIN. 
how can a user get the CDS of interest? Well, the best is to go to the FTP, FTP side at the, on, at the EBI, and here you have CDS for human and plants, for instance. Okay, another user is unhappy because his favorite protein is still in tremble and not in Swiss cross. In this case, the best, when you have your favorite protein as a tremble and you desperately love to have it annotate, is to use a button here, request updates. And then you can ask for the, uh, for the annotation. And Madeleine Moinam will take care of, uh, of that. She will, she will, uh, she will take care of having the, the entry annotated as soon as possible. Basically, when we receive this kind of request, we just drop everything and we annotate. The problem with this entry is that the users requested for this, specifically this protein, MAP KAKK3, and basically it's not a gene name, it is not a protein name, we just couldn't find it, so we couldn't annotate the Tremble entry corresponding. So please, if you want us to annotate a Tremble entry, use the, um, the button I showed you before. Is there a specific reason why certain entries do not enter the SwissProt section? Well, SwissProt annotation, as I told you, is manual and it is time consuming. Usually it starts with a Tremble entry and super annotator or his super team of super annotators. The first step will be to gather all Tremble entries which correspond uh, to the same um, to the to protein products coming from the same gene in the same species, and these sequences will be merged, which means that our daily bread will be a sequence comparison, where every single discrepancy will be carefully analyzed. First of all, we will decide whether it's the same gene or not, but then is this due to alternative splicing? Is it a polymorphism, is it a sequencing error, and so on and so forth. All these differences will be documented in the entry. Once we have decided upon a most reliable sequence and documented all the others, uh, the sequence is analyzed using uh, bioinformatic tools, and the results of these tools will be, again, critically reviewed by annotators. Then the next step will be to find in the literature uh, information re uh, relevant for this protein. It can be very quickly done if uh, the protein is not well characterized. It can be very time consuming if there is a lot of paper or if the data in the literature are contradictory. We also look in other databases, uh, look for information or we contact uh, experts if we have some more questions. Once everything is done, the annotation is checked again, and finally the entry is integrated into SwissProt, and the, um, the associated Tremble entries are deleted from, from Tremble. Once the entry is in SwissProt, the problem will be updates, and here a user is just surprised that his paper has not been integrated uh, into SwissProt. We have currently about, about 250,000 entries. It's difficult to really follow the literature for each of them. So it's very good that um, when users ask us for um, updates because we cannot see everything, unfortunately. What, what we think the best way to do it is if you see an obsolete entry, is to use again, again this button here up. And as I told you before, for annotation of Tremble entry, in this case for update, we also do it as quickly as possible. So in this case, the paper has been added and the phosphorylation was described in the entry. Now, some users have problem when searching uh, SwissProt. And for instance, this user wanted to retrieve all bacterial and viral uh, protein sequences uh, with virulence factors. So currently we have one uh, a tool that allows it very nicely, it's SRS, and we are working um, on new tools 
for the unified websites, Unicode websites. SRS allows to look in a lot of uh, SwissPod topics, and it allows to combine them in the most appropriate uh, way for the search. For instance, for this user, he could have looked for the keyword virulence in either bacteria or viruses, and in this case, he would have retrieved uh, above 1,000 entries. Okay, next question. Do in SwissProt, does one protein correspond to one amino acid sequence? And the answer is very simple, it's no. SwissProt is non-redundant, which means for us that in one SwissProt entry, you will find all protein products encoded by one gene in one species. And this includes, of course, fragments, but also polymorphism, alternative splicing variants, uh, events of RNA editing, also sequencing errors. Simply. Basically, what we would like in SwissProt is to reflect the complexity of the proteome. Um, if we take human as an example, this complexity starts at the genome, where we have about 25,000 protein encoding genes. And these genes, of course, bear polymorphism, which means that the same protein in two individuals will still be a little bit different. Now, um, the next step is transcription, and then uh, the nature can choose to use a different promoter, for instance. When the gene is transcribed, it will undergo splicing, and in some cases, alternative splicing. Uh, the RNA can also undergo editing. All this increases uh, the transcriptome complexity, and we estimate that the human transcriptome will be around, let's say, one or maybe more hundred thousand transcripts. After translation, the proteins, most of them, will undergo uh, post-translation modifications, which can be or cleavages or addition of simple or complex groups uh, or cross-linking. And all this also increases the level of complexity of the protein. If we decide I, uh, to show you, I will, I will show you as an example the annotation of alternative splicing in SwissProt. The first thing is if you want to, to catch alternative splicing, you basically have to, to annotate or merge all the CDS that are available. Like here in this entry where we had 13 um, CDS to merge together. You compare the sequences and hopefully what you can find is that here at the C-terminus, for instance, of the glucocorticoid receptor, uh, the difference was due to an alternative splicing event. So where will you find the annotation in this case? This is a, uh, the topology of a Swiss spot entry with a sequence at the bottom, identifiers, accession numbers, protein and gene names taxonomy, a block of reference, comments in which you find information about the function, the subcellular location, tissue expression, and also alternative splicing, cross-references, keywords, and the Fisher table which describes the sequence residue by residue. So, most of the annotation will be found in the reference section, the comments, the keywords, and the feature table. In the reference section, we add as a title to the, um, the publication the name in bracket of the isoforms described in this paper. In the comments section, we have a special topic called alternative products where we list all the isoforms, giving a name and if it exists, a synonym. All the, the, iso, the sequence for all the isoforms listed can be retrieved in faster format um, using this button, and here you have all the sequences. Please note that we have tools that use these sequences in addition to the sequences shown at the bottom of the entry. So, uh, for instance, BLAST searches include these isoforms. In the keyword section, you have a special keyword called, logically, alternative splicing, and 
In the future table, uh, all the alternative splicing events are described under the VARSIC key, which tells you exactly the boundary of the changes produced by alternative splicing. The name of the either form are also clickable, and then it also uh, allows you to see the sequence of the, this specific either form. So if we take human as an example and we look at human statistics, the reason why I chose human is that it's in this organism that most of the alternative splicing isoforms are uh, described and annotated. So currently, we have around 14,500 entries, which correspond to approximately the same amount of genes. But in addition, we have close to 8,000 alternative splicing isoforms. So in total, in SwissWorld, we currently have 22,500 uh, human sequences. And this is only considering the splicing isoforms, alternative splicing isoforms, and not other diversity generating events such as polymorphism. Currently, we have 27,000 polymorphisms in human entries. So basically, one entry describes much more than just one protein sequence. The sequences can be downloaded for instance, from the Uniprot website. And here, if you look at Uniprot, you have the choice and you can download the SwissProt uh, sequences that are shown at the bottom of the entry or and uh, the SwissProt sequences of alternative splicing isoforms. Now, the last question is actually a very common one. It's probably the most common we have. And it is not really scientific. It doesn't concern the content of the entry, problem to find a protein or to retrieve it. Actually, the main question is to know, can I buy this protein from you? And for how much? Unfortunately, we are just a database, so we can provide entries, but we cannot provide, we cannot sell you the protein. But it might be an idea if we have funding problems to start a new business. So thank you very much for your attention. So we have actually time for questions. And if you don't have them now, then you can but always. Actually, we have five days for questions, I think. Well doesn't seem to be the case. So, thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I see them now. I, I will give you. Hi. Uh, a great many of your conflict lines will be resolvable against genome data as probable technical errors. Do you go back to authors so that they would uh, fix You mean solving those? the conflicts? So you, so you reduce the number of so, Absolutely. So in some we do that you, on a regular basis. We do that because very often, well, first we update entries for various reasons. Some of them may be, for instance, the addition of a cross reference. But in this case, very often we also recheck the sequence. We go to, for instance, for conflicts, for simple conflicts consi uh, consisting in one amino acid, we will go on a regular basis into dbSNP to see whether this conflict is confirmed as a, as a polymorphism or now we have new, much better tools to see alternative splicing. This is also something that we will constantly recheck. And sometimes if we merge a Tremble entry to a pre-existing um, SwissPot entry, it can also be a very good indicator that some authors just describe that this sequence is an alternative splicing isoform. In this case, we will correct a conflict that we couldn't understand before and indicate it as a splicing. So yes, there is a constant update. But if you personally see something that is wrong, please, you can accelerate this system by just asking for an update. I know, I know, we exchanged mail. I don't know if mail is, I don't know if you remember. <laughs> uh, sorry, can I just, one more question. Uh, w w when you do the SRS, are you kind of, I mean, are you making sure that you're optimizing for that the SRS is going um, that you're going to, that people are going to get the best out of SRS when they 
when you put in new lines and new fields? Hello. Currently, we're working on new search tools because we are working on this unified Uniprop website. So hopefully, we'll have something maybe better than SRS to search Swissport or Tremble. All right. Are there any other questions? Well, now it doesn't seem to be the case. So thank you again, Anulka. Thank <laughs> you.